This video was brought to you by Squarespace. Ah, back at home, back to my studio, back to the cold hard knowledge that I have absolutely no idea how to make websites. And that, my friends, is exactly why I use Squarespace. Building my website, Arlo recommends, so ridiculously easy. All I had to do was pick a template, I messed around with it a little bit to make it look the way I wanted, and I was done. Now I can change it however I want, I can create content for it super easily, I can move elements around, embed pictures and videos and tweets and stuff, and I can do a bunch of stuff ahead of time and then schedule posts for later, I can have them automatically pushed to social media, and if I ever need more, Squarespace offers loads of powerful extensions as well as some really, really nice analytics. To try out Squarespace for yourself, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. Then when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash Arlo to save 10% off your first website or domain. And now for today's recommendation. FZ Side F by Disasterpiece. Disasterpiece does incredible music, all sorts of famous indie game soundtracks and stuff, but I've been listening to this album in particular over and over again for the last few weeks. It's so ridiculously good. Thanks again to Squarespace. Now, on with the video. It's so good to be home, isn't it? Yeah. Ramble Rabble. Hello my friends, it is I, it is Arlo, and uh, back in 2020 with the release of Pikmin 3 Deluxe, I pulled together some fellow Pikmin ears, real word, and uh, we just had a little discussion about it. Everyone seemed to really enjoy that, so I thought uh, we should do it again. Pikmin 4 is coming out soon, and so uh, please welcome me in uh, just joining so warmly and welcomingly to the discussion first, who am I gonna do first? Who's more important? I'll flip a coin. She says. I'll go. She says. Wow. Anti Goodness. alphabetical wow. order. I'm sorry. Um, I had to pick someone. I I panicked. Now, uh, to be truly gentlemanly, uh, I will say that I will allow Antu to take the floor because he. I feel he's more important than me. <laughs> this is weird. Didn't pick he said last it. Okay, dodgeball. let's do it. Forget uh, I said. She says. He's not here yet. Please welcome. Ant dude. Actually, you know what? That's fair. He was the last one to be ready, so that 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 checks out. That's true. You got here first. That's true. That's true. Hi, hi. Happy to be back. It's been been a minute, but always happy to talk Pikmin. It's a momentous occasion. It is a momentous occasion. This is a good good time. Ant dude, of course, has a channel. Uh, that's true. Same name as his actual name, which is Ant Dude. That's very true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's a very good channel. He has several excellent videos on Pikmin games of all yes. things. Yes, yes, yes. Go check it out. And then also joining us in this conversation is, she says. Hey, what's hello, up, she everybody? Says. Hi there. She says is, of course, the, uh, the the king, the emperor of Boundary Break, which is also a very excellent channel uh, where, no, do the thing. Uh, it's a show where we basically take the camera anywhere we want to try and find secrets and new discoveries to some of our favorite games. Oh my god, he said the thing. The thing. He said the thing. Um, also a very great channel. I love both of your channels. Thank, Thank you very much. much. And uh, so yeah, we're going to talk about Pikmin. Of course, uh, we have had a really, really substantial, meaty demo mm -hmm. to sink our teeth into. Um, and I know that, um, let, let's just cover like really super basic impressions. Um, I know that I was a really big fan of it. There are some things that I'm a little bit like, I just gotta like see how it turns out. And of course we'll talk about specifics in a bit here. Ant Dude, I think you're more on the same page as me. I think Enjoy so, yeah. pretty good. Yeah, 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 I think same thing as you. Couple things that could be an issue, but I imagine in the full game, won't, it won't even be a factor when it comes to like review scores, quote unquote. Yeah, for sure. Like it's gonna review really well, like for serious. Anybody who has a problem is gonna be, you know, a very, very seasoned, Pikmin playing person with very particular opinions. Speaking of which, yes. I was seeing on Twitter that she says was no. not a hundred percent sold on it. Spotlight. <laughs> I well, you know, I I always say that more Pikmin is always a good thing. So I even found enjoyment out of Hey Pikmin. Same. You know. So um, the only wow. thing that I was saying is that based off my impressions with the demo, it it has potential to be probably in last place as, as out of the four, but. I still think it's probably going to be a great time. That's good. Good positive spin. Good backpedaling. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't go on a hate tirade or anything. So I think the to open up the discussion, the very first thing I'd like to talk about is my the number one takeaway, probably for anyone who's played a lot of Pikmin, the number one thing that is immediately different, that radically changes the gameplay, 
is basically an auto lock on feature where whenever the cursor gets close to something, it locks on, it gives you like the perfect way to throw. This kind of removes some of the nuance, but it also just kind of streamlines the gameplay. Um, but who wants to go first and just kind of address that? Cause that's yeah. the big thing to me. Would you agree that that's like, that is the thing that is different about this game? Yeah, well, I would actually probably say the, the biggest difference is you know how they handle the the supporting cast and everything. That's kind of interesting and new, and I that is true. That is very yeah. New. But, but gameplay to, wise, yeah. To touch on that, I I think that honestly, like when you take the time to figure it out, it feels rewarding that you um you know that you got the nuance of the control. And some people never even do. Some people prefer the Wii remote over the GameCube controller to this day because they can't really they fumble with it, right? So the fact that we're now just focusing on the strategy involves, you know, throwing it on a bulbor's back versus its eyes or something like that. And that you can just focus on that decision that that's being made instead of, you know, nuancing the controls in the precise spot in order to make it work, I think is okay. I think it is more inviting to new players. And, you know, although I took the time to, to work with those nuanced controls in the olden days, I'm totally fine with, you know, getting with the times to bring in more fans if, if this is going to be what makes it happen, you know? Yeah, I, I would definitely agree. It's 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 just so much more accessible. This is definitely aiming to be the most accessible, approachable Pikmin because yeah, by removing the nuance, it's not because you know I, I I do like the nuance in the older games where yeah you're, you're throwing a Pikmin and the exact precise location that Pikmin lands, whether it's near something or on something or on a certain part of something, that is going to dramatically affect the outcome of what happens. And that kind of randomness is really fun, but it is also very intimidating to new players. And this is, yeah, just streamlined is exactly what it is. It's And so you're removing the nuance, but that puts an even bigger focus on pure raw strategy on just planning out exactly what you're doing. It's, it's like, it's not about the execution. It's about the the plan, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think, Ant? Yeah, I think that's also a combination of two different other differences with this is, is one, the camera system is different. You don't really have that top-down approach anymore. That was the only information we got when the game was first released was or announced was, hey, it's behind the back now. And we're like, well, what does that mean? Uh, yeah, so weird. When, you, when you don't have that top down and you can like precisely aim, plus you don't have the Wii remote styled setup anymore. And what's interesting with the controls is the gyroscope aiming, which I'm a big fan of. They're not going the Pikmin 3 route where you can just sort of aim everywhere like the Wii or Wii U versions. And it's mm -hmm. evident when they ported one and two, uh, the gyroscope only activates with, you know, when you're holding A or B and that's, they're doing that in four also. So it's like the, the you don't have that same precision at all times. So the lock on system had to be, I guess, mandatory for this to work. But once it clicked, you're able to just go so fast. Pikmin throw so fast. I, I see four things on the horizon, and then boom, 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 already there. And yeah, I think for accessibility, having that full access to, to the, the speed of your entire team, I think will just make for a more satisfying experience. Yeah, it definitely just kind of like different, you know, even it's like, well, we, we had three games with the old style. Why don't we try one that is just so focused on the strategy element? That, yeah, it, it does feel good. To, like, and I can't wait to like play and replay and replay. I've been meaning to replay the demo. I know I'm not going to last until release and I want to just do it faster, you know, just kind of run through. Yeah, you just boom, boom, just throw over there, over there, over there. Everything yeah. is perfect. There's and no stray Pikmin. There's nothing, no, no loose ends. It's all just so clean. And you'll be surprised how fast you can get through the demo when you're skipping cutscenes too. Like that eats up a lot yes. of the demo's time. <laughs> yeah, it really does. Um, and it is very funny that like, yeah, so the the, the gyro, you know, you, it, it's only when you're holding down the button. And so it technically, I keep telling myself, okay, there still could be more nuance, you know, cause you can lock onto an enemy, but then when you hold it down, you can still kind of like sorta aim around a radius mm -hmm. at the same time, at least in the demo I've seen so far, I've not seen any reason to. You know, it, you're really like it's locked right on to whatever like weak spot there is. So I haven't really seen like a reason why you would want to aim somewhere else. So I'm kind of hoping that there might be some enemies or something where it kind of requires, oh, like where on this thing are you going to aim? A little bit like um, Metroid Prime 3, actually. Sure. You yeah. know, one and two started out with just a regular lock on. Uh, but then in Prime 3, you lock on, but then within that circle of that lock on, you can kind of shoot wherever, and they designed enemies around that, where, you know, you want to shoot the top or the bottom or, or whatever. And I'm kind of hoping to see that. I'm not getting my hopes up. Um, does that seem like something that is possible, do you think? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, the opening, I imagine, I mean, like, realistically, for, a, for as a Pikmin, like, enthusiast, the demo stuff is, is pretty easy. You don't really get to see any thing that would require any level of nuance, besides maybe, like, the fire rock guy, uh, and the new enemy. Otherwise, it's all just pretty straightforward, but I would imagine three or four levels in, there's gonna be these really big enemies, especially for the boss battles, that are probably gonna require a little bit of nuance that would require that, because their old selling point with three was, oh, if you aim at the Bulborb's eyes now, because of the precision of HD, so, you know, it'll do more damage. So I would imagine some enemies w would have that, but it probably won't be a huge thing. Yeah, I hope so. I'm kind of, I am, you know, I am worried. I, I don't want it to just be like, there's the boss, you lock on, and all you're doing is moving around to dodge attacks right. and throwing. Which, uh, I don't know, could happen, but again, it's the sort of thing where it's a big change and we just kind of have to wait until it comes out and how it is designed around uh, around that new idea. Uh, but there's another very big change I would like to talk about, and it is a doggy dog. It is Ochi. Yeah. What What are your thoughts on Ochi? This is such a dra- it's an, It is another very, very big change to just how the game works, and I was so torn on it originally, like, going in. Um, but I'll save my thoughts for a minute. Uh, she says, what do you think about the dog? I immediately thought, you know, this is like hero characters in World War, not World of Warcraft. I got so used to saying that now, but like Warcraft 3. <clears throat> um, you know, they have like the original units that were in Warcraft 1 and 2. And then when they introduced 3, they started implementing hero characters, had better stats, they had more functionality. Um, and I think Ochi is just essentially like an extension of that for the Pikmin series. And I'm all for it. I think it's really cool. I think that Ochi doesn't creep me out like with some people. So I'm okay <laughs> with having him around. <laughs> and just being able it's to jump. Nice if it had a nose. Yeah, you know, like, it's actually, it does a lot to kind of expand the gameplay in a way that I was hoping to see with the series, you know. So with previous games, they would just have different types of Pikmin. And that was cool. And I always appreciate a new Pikmin type. But there was not, like, a huge expansion to the series gameplay-wise. And with with this one, with Ochi, there's so much functionality that's being introduced already, and who knows if there's going to be anything else introduced further down the road when you get further into the game. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what sort of dynamic that character keeps putting into the game as you progress. Yeah, definitely. What about you, Ant? Yeah, so it's, it's interesting. I'm assuming, um, granted, I, I've been on a bit of a media blackout. I don't know if there's multiple captains that you control this time around. So, like... Ochi kind of replaces that idea as well. So it's like an it's like another captain that can do its own things, can attack, can be sent out like a normal Pikmin, but you can also ride it uh, for some things, which is also really cool because now, even though the Pikmin AI is smarter, you don't have to worry about stray Pikmin just getting stuck on walls. Like everyone can just like consolidate onto Ochi and just ride him, uh, which is great. And then another big change is you can upgrade him. Uh, that's... You can indeed. That's amazing. Uh, and the trailer, the the trailer from the last Direct did, f f like, prank me, because there's a bit in the trailer where everyone rides on Ochi and he's swimming. And I've seen this a lot. A lot of people jumped on Ochi and immediately went into the water. Yes! And <laughs> they were like, oh, yeah, he can swim. Yeah. Oh, I guess he can't swim yet. And then everyone got to see nah. Ochi drown. Um, but I, 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 I really like the dynamic. It helps that I think Ochi's cute. I, I guess the eyes kind of... But every Pikmin character has like those weird dead eyes, so I just I don't know. I think I think it's cute. <laughs> so, uh, someone said the, like that the lack of a nose makes it kind of creepy. Yeah, that's that's really I think sure. That's, it's weird. I I think I think Ochi's decently cute. Not not the most uncute I've seen. I think you know. Yeah, I'm it's warm sort of like a, Ochi. It's sort of like a mix between something like Poochie from. Yoshi's Island and the Emperor Bull Blacks. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's that's basically it. That's exactly it. I yeah, think I'm just easy to please. I'm a big fan of Nintendo dogs. I want to see Ochi, Poochie, and uh, Polter Pup all hanging out. I, I think that'd be great. Dude, that'd be amazing. We should make a game like that. In yes, general, Nintendo dogs, but it's just actual Nintendo dogs. Everybody loves dogs. So why is Nintendo not capitalizing? That's what on I'm saying. More? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I do think it's it's interesting because it's like, okay, Pikmin 2, add a captain. Pikmin 3, now you got three captains. And they could have just kept going with that, um, but they elected to do something a lot more interesting because mm -hmm. it's like, and, and yeah, I, I mean, I technically haven't seen like confirmation one way or the other if there are more captains. I don't think there are more captains. I think this is basically it. Mm -hmm. um, you think so, so it's like, it's, I, I think so. That's what it feels like to me. Um, so this is basically, if that's true, then this is. Um, 
reducing the number of captains, well, technically one. So it's kind of like you have one extra captain, but that captain has so much more functionality than a regular one. It kind of acts like a captain, but then it also kind of acts like a Pikmin and then it can jump, everyone can jump onto it. They've just added, it, it's such a, such an unexpected just take on this whole thing. It is not something I would have ever imagined and yet that's why it's so genius. It's like, yeah, we can't just keep adding captains. That's kind of boring and it's kind of, you know, it's gonna get hard to manage after a while. Mm -hmm. So let's kind of like, let's condense it, let's rein it in and add more functionality to what we have. And I do, that. It's, it's just so weird. The fact that it's a captain and a Pikmin it can carry stuff. Yeah that it can attack stuff, but it also can like move around and command units and you can switch back and forth to do like puzzling stuff. It's very I, I, weird. I could, I could see its utility really ramping up dramatically if you want to get good. I can see the utility of Ochi. Cause there, there's such minor things and I'm sure we'll take, talk about a lot of quality of life stuff, but like one of my favorite things with Ochi is if you're riding on top and you find like a big ball orb, you can ram into it and then all of the Pikmin will jump off the Ochi and start attacking it. So you get like that initial burst of damage and then all the Pikmin just start doing their thing. Like stuff like that, the utility of Ochi really impressed me. I kind of thought he would just be there for like maybe like some new platforming because you can jump, but it seems like, you know, typical Nintendo fashion. There's a lot more depth than initially to be believe. Uh, yeah, believed. there's, they, they threw in a lot of perks to incorporate Ochi, like to use Ochi into your strategy. Like, if you don't use Ochi, you're just kind of handicapping yourself. You're not really, you know, getting as much out of any any situation in this game, it seems like. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah, you can charge Pikmin at a ball board, but if you don't use Ochi to initially ram it, you know, you stand to make the, the battle more difficult. So, it's cool. It's I like that, like, you know, it's he's not just there. It's sort of like a, you feel very encouraged to use him. Yeah, absolutely, and I and I'm kind of hoping that they're that we're encouraged to use different strategies too, because like I wouldn't. Well, I mean, you know, you look at a lot of enemies in like two, for instance, and it really does come down to just spam them with purples. I don't want it to quite be like that. Like I hope there are a lot of enemies where it's like ramming is just not an option, you know. Mm -hmm. So like there's some where okay, yeah, this is one. It's right there. We can slam right into it. Oh, but this one over here, like we got to do a lot more throwing, and we probably will. I know, like even in the trailer, we saw things kind of higher up. Um, so I can see it being, I just really hope that ramming into is not just like what you do with every enemy. Because sure. <laughs> in the demo, it is like most of them. You really just kind of want to ram into them. And I feel like that could get a little boring after a while. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a very, a very cool mechanic. Yeah, absolutely. And, and they very much do encourage you to utilize Ochi in a lot of different ways. Yeah. So many. And like they even unlock as you go, even just in the demo, like just the the layers of functionality just open up more and more and oh oh you can upgrade this and then you get entire different commands that you can use and like yep and if it goes beyond that even beyond the demo then there's just it's a lot it's really a lot it's a lot and there's only one level in the demo we don't know how many levels there yeah. are typically we only have like what five maybe six levels so imagining the ramp up for that uh yeah i, I can only imagine some of the stuff that you can do like i i think the Micromanaging will still be there with the lack of captains, and Ochi will obviously be, play a big part in that. Don't don't sleep on Ochi is what is what I think we're saying. He's going to be way cooler than I think anyone initially thought. Yeah, for sure. It could have just been like, oh, you know, he follows you around and sniffs out things that yeah. you can dig up. But like, no, it, yeah, he's he's your second captain plus. Yes. Um. So let's see. What else have I got here? Speaking of things being more complex than anticipated and really ramping up. Let's talk a little bit about just like the story and the characters. And I think it is, I think everyone is basically unanimously agreeing that there's just, a, there's a lot and there's a lot of dialogue and that <laughs> demo really does not ever stop interrupting you, which is like, I, it's a little annoying. I sort of get it. Cause there's, there is a lot. There's so many new features, but boy, it's a lot, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and yet, but look, you can skip it if you want to. I don't recommend it because there is a lot of new functionality to the game that without that context, you may miss out on some things. So as a first timer, it, it's just I think more than anything, you just have to go with the in you have to go in with the expectation that you're going to be introduced to a lot of new things and you're going to have to learn about a lot of new things. But if you truly think that you can get away with just 
learning on your own, that plus button is always there for you, I guess. Like I said, you know, I, I played a little bit of this demo before we did this discussion, and I wanted to get as much gameplay in as possible, so I skipped every single cutscene. And something that took me about three and a half hours was reduced to about one, because there was just no story, no explanations, no nothing. I just, you know, played the game. I kind of knew where I was going to, so there's that. But, um, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, like, as far as the story goes, uh, it's a... Do we talk about this now? It's like a soft, or not even a soft reboot. It's like, a, it feels like it's just a straight up reboot. It really does. It absolutely does. I mean, I assume anyone who's listening to this has played the demo and everything. So yeah, I mean, like, th there seems to be some disagreement. Like, it could just be that this is, you know, at the very beginning, there's a whole little monologue thing that Olimar does. This, uh, this, and talks about... How, oh, I crashed on the planet, and then I found a dog, and then we we're flying around a house, and now everyone needs to save me. And they, what's weird is they very easily could have framed this as just another one of Olimar's adventures, because that's what Three did, he just, he came back. It really does not seem that way. He makes it sound like this is the first time he was on the planet, because he didn't even know what a Pikmin was. Then I discovered Pikmin, and the Pikmin helped me get my ship parts back, but then things went wrong. So, like, it it absolutely does seem like it's basically rebooting everything. It's kind of retconning out two and three, which is weird, because, like, we just had three with new story DLC with Olimar, <laughs> like, telling that part of the story. So it's, I, it's very weird. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, it, it, I, get, I would say, like, you know, we started this discussion with... Um, things I didn't like. I would say like the number one thing is is probably this. I the story seems to be interesting, so I don't hate it outright. But it it does feel a little disingenuous to me to put a four at the end of this if it's not continuing the story that was established from one, two, and three. Um, yeah, and I mean like there was also just sort of like a a sense of um, mystique or something that was left unsaid with with three in the ending of that game. So I was like. You know, I thought we would we'd learn more about the last boss because it was sort of mysterious. Um, but it doesn't, it just looks like we're kind of almost doing like a, a universe B story route for the events of Pikmin 1. Yeah, basically. Yeah. It's, what it's really, it, yeah, that's, it's interesting because I, when I went through the prologue, I really just didn't think that hard about it. Like, discover doesn't necessarily automatically mean first time seeing it. Just like, oh, I discovered these things. Like, I just I stumbled on them again. Like, Olimar always happens to crash your ship uh, by a place where Pikmin just happened to be. So I guess I just was like, oh, this is just another adventure. I, I was just kind of surprised, maybe because I, I never really dig deep into things, and I was just excited to play Pikmin 4. Uh, I just didn't see it that way. I mean, we'll wait until the, the final product, of course, to see what, uh, but... I don't know. That just didn't ma matter to me. Like, uh, the, the tutorialization, you know, I, I think could be an issue, but I imagine Nintendo is designing this game for the first-timer player, uh, and there's a lot for new people. Like, I, I know of plenty of people who this is going to be their first Pikmin game, so maybe the tutorialization will help versus, like, Pikmin 1 and 2 where you just get thrown in. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's just it's, It was interesting to see because it's not something that I ever I, I considered. Uh, cause even if it is a soft reboot, I, I don't know. I never looked at the plot that deep. I guess it just didn't matter to me as much, but... I think it comes down to the wording. Cause he's like, I found these Pikmin, but he says, I named them Pikmin. Like he's like, su very much suggesting that in that moment, yeah. like while he was crashed, he named them Pikmin. Yeah. That's really what makes it seem like, yeah, I don't know. And it's just, it's, it's weird. If that is the case, it's just so unnecessary. Sure. It's 100% unnecessary. If that is the and case, I, then know, yeah, like definitely the, weird. Yeah, and it's not like the plot is was ever super deep. It was just nice that we were kind of, especially with three, because, you know, two came out pretty soon after one. Then when three came out, it was really cool after nine years to have some sort of, like, kind of continuation of the story. You had brand new characters, but then Olimar and Louis come into it. And then especially, again, with the DLC, you bring Olimar and Louis and, and uh, the president back, and it's like, oh, like, they're kind of building a thing now. And so now in 4, there seems to be so much more story and, and characters and dialogue, and that seemed really cool and exciting that they were expanding the world of these Hockitations and just this, the, the, the lore, as it were. But like all of that is going to feel a lot more flat if they are just retconning everything else. Then they're not expanding, they're just 
restarting. So I, it's I a think Star Fox I, Zero effect, right? It's a, yeah, exactly. People are so upset with that. Anything game. Miyamoto is involved in. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> I think the thing that's going to be a big make or break for this entire theory, uh, and it gets a little bit deep into the game, a little bit deeper, I guess. But there's like that mysterious fuzzy red captain who happens to look like Olimar, but just covered in red fuzz and happens to have the dog that Olimar found near the start of the game. I wonder who just that so could happens. be. Uh, yeah, all just all just happenstance. So who knows uh, what, what that could end up being. And Maybe just, that plays a part. Well, I just want to say, wouldn't it be really funny if we all just got played and it's actually Louie that's underneath That'd that? That'd be great. I'm down for a that plot be, twist. That would be yeah. fun. Or just anybody else. If it was literally any other person, Olimar just kind of shows up. He's like, hey, what's up, guys? Yeah. <laughs> like, or they or, 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 or Pikmin goes the multiverse route. Everyone likes that, right? The multiverse oh, Pikmin. I really, I really hope not. I hope this is not truly an, an <laughs> alternate timeline. Uh, I will say though, like speaking of the story though, uh, to get back on the very positive, it like it is a lot and it's a lot of dialogue and it takes a lot of time. But I do feel like they're establishing something really cool. There's so many characters and so much dialogue. It re I don't know, it kind of, even if it's a little bit overwhelming, it also just kind of, it gives it a real sense of, uh, I don't know, it gives you a sense of purpose. Um, I mean, like, I don't know, it's a Pikmin game, but there's like loads of characters and all these different people from different planets and they're all coming together and they've got, you know, different vocations. And I think that's, that's really cool. It's a really interesting element that I did not anticipate seeing in Pikmin. Yeah, I, I love, first of all, I love the intrigue that the demo introduces. So yes. like, even if it is a reboot, it's still a fascinating story that seems a little more involved than any past uh, Pikmin series. I think the closest would be three. And I personally love how they're utilizing all these different crew members or even people that weren't part of your crew, apparently. I, I love, you know, that if they're going to go all in on this less isolating feeling game that they it serves a purpose right and so it serves a purpose gameplay wise and story wise and that is definitely like it's sort of like a a give and take with me i love you know what they're doing and i see that their vision and what they're doing with it and there's also a part of me that just feels a bit abandoned for uh keeping up with the first three games but what i played so far story wise and and gameplay functionality wise i'm i'm really enjoying it for what it is. Yeah, there's definitely intrigue. Like, it's funny because like when they were, you know, during the latest trailer or whatever, they just kind of like almost casually like, oh, who's this mysterious character who introduces Dondori battle? And it's like, no, that, that's the whole thing. Like, you know, the, the, the main plot is presented as we need to rescue everybody. But like we could see everyone was here to rescue Olimar and this person seems to be Olimar. But not only that, then, then you play the demo and it's like, no, this person, has been like Pikminized and is like trying to convert everybody to his religion. And then I did <laughs> not anticipate at all that one part of the demo where you look over and you just see like a dude just like dancing. Like, what? did you guys see that? What? Huh? No. A part of the, you might not have got, you didn't get to the, well, there are two Dondori battles. Did no, okay, so I only did one. one. Yeah, I only did the one. I didn't want to, I didn't want to, I didn't want to do the whole, the whole demo. Okay, I won't go into it. Let's just say it gets. What? Dude, dancing? It gets deeper. Oh my God. The story gets deeper. The, okay. Like the, the demo introduces some intrigue that I did not even anticipate. And it kind of is putting a weird spin on the story. Okay. That excites me. I, get, I got that feeling off of the, cool. the first Dodori battle. It's Dodori, right? Dandori. Um, Don, Dondori. Dondori, sorry. Dondori. Um, yeah, I got that from the, the first battle. So, well, naturally, I'm going to be playing the demo after this discussion so I can see the second one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're, and yeah, even just what, you know, Olimar question mark says is just like, yeah, he seems to want to like convert. He's like literally kidnapping castaways so he can like, oh man, Pikmanize him. It's really weird. Like I, this is not a direction that I ever in a million years would have anticipated Pikmin going. <laughs> you didn't? And that makes it, no, like why, why, like let's, let's take the, the, bad ending, the non-canon bad ending <laughs> from one, the cut, the weird concept of Olimar being sucked up into an onion when he dies and turning into Pikmin Olimar. Dude, Let's honestly, run with like, that. Honestly, <laughs> like, I feel like that's do. a sense of preservation for, for the old games because Pikmin 1 was just, it was brutal, wasn't it? it, it like, there's just so much that kind of conveys that this is a harsh reality of how nature works and all that. So, 
Um, you know, once we got up to Pikmin 3, they kind of diluted that a little bit, made it a little cuter, and it's not completely gone, of course, but, like, even with the boss designs, they feel a little more Nintendo-y than, like, uh, than past games. Yeah, more colorful. Yeah, and so, you know, for the story to go in this direction, I love it. That, that for, as a Pikmin fan, an old-school Pikmin fan, like, that's something I love to see. Yeah, absolutely. I like that there's multiple quest lines, too, like, almost Zelda-y, like, every time... There's a lot of cutscenes and dialogue, but I, I, like every so often, be like, "Oh, you upgraded this new quest," or uh, you know, you finished the new line in this quest. There's multiple quests. You can ping different quests and stuff. Like almost, you're 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 really working towards like multiple goals now because you have to save your crew members, and then you find out, wait a minute, there's crew members that are not part of our crew because you save the one, then it's from PNF 404, and it's like, oh my god, there's more people to save, and then there's Alamari's fuzzy is weird. And I imagine that doesn't even scratch the surface of some of the mysteries that, like, once you get to the, the following levels, it, it's going to go into some weird directions, I fully anticipate. Like, maybe we find out the origins of Ochi. Maybe there's, like, a weird dog tribe, because why... <laughs> like, the one that fake Olimar has is green and fat, and I don't like how we... I don't like how... I don't like how, don't like how that one looks. That one looks terrifying, but... So. He, he looks like an Emperor Bull Blacks more than anything. Right. But, Absolutely, yeah. So, like, a weird question, though, is I think... That one had a Pikmin tail, and then they bring an Ochi from another planet, right? For the Ochi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's going on here? Is that is that that uh, dog? Was he also converted into a Pikmin? Is that is that what's happening here? That's what I imagine. I imagine that he might have also like di or she uh, might have died. But at the same time, like okay, so we know that when you suck a Hakatation up into an onion. It turns into a Pikmin version, but that doesn't happen with any other creature. They get turned into Pikmin, so it's almost like the Pikmin themselves, do they decide, like, what to do this with? It could just be that this dog was just intelligent enough <laughs> or something that they decided to Pikminize it. I don't... Who's making these decisions? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a fun thing to think about. I, For me, it's sort of like... Um, what are those laws, those international laws, where you can't bring, like, an animal from one country to another? Yeah, uh, I who knows, but like basically, like the way I thought of it was sort of like if you introduce foreign creatures to another planet, it doesn't have the same effect as if you. Um, oh, that's a really good thing. That makes complete sense because all we've seen is PNF four hundred four creatures. They get converted into Pikmin. It could be that you bring anything else. And then when the where did that dog come from? Yeah. Originally, there's probably just some dead hockitation out in the <laughs> buried somewhere. <laughs> if you want to be a little grim about it. Yeah, definitely a lot of mysteries. And like and I'm and I'm trying not to get my hopes up too much about them exploring too deeply cuz I know Nintendo likes to kind of especially with Pikmin, they like to kind of plant these little ideas but then kind of let you run with the theory on your own. Kind of in yeah. the same way of the bad ending of one. Yeah. Is, uh, it's when not you really said that I immediately thought of the uh, ending of Pikmin 2 with Louie. Yeah, there's a lot of like just kind of funny things. They're almost like throwaway gags, but you, we st we still have to like kind of, how does that work? How does that fit into the universe and, and all that stuff? Um, here, here's the thing that just popped into my head. Um, it's kind of interesting how you know the first game uh, kind of took place all in kind of like one kind of forest area, and then two was I don't kind of the it was the same thing because a lot of the same areas. Then three was like no, we're going to like these different continents like kind of all over the world and exploring mm -hmm. a big part of the world, which was always weird. Cause they're like, we got all the fruit in the world. And it's like, you've only explored like 13 square feet um, <laughs> yeah. of the entire planet. This, I, it, we don't know for sure, but at least based on all of the trailer stuff and just kind of how it looks, it looks like the whole game is going to be kind of centered around this house. Right. There's like a house at the center and it just kind of feels like you're in the garden and the, uh, you know, in the caves and stuff, kind of surrounding it. It kind of feels like a much smaller area than the other games, even though the areas themselves feel very big because they're just wider and you do a lot more like running around and stuff. Um, so I think that's interesting. If it's really just like kind of centered around one place, I could see like thematically that being pretty interesting. Wow, I didn't even think about that. But now that you've said it, I'm like piecing all of what I've seen so far together. And yeah, okay. So. It's all just around this one house. Olimar flies in the house at the beginning, and then they're, you know, they're in the garden. You can see the house in the background. Like, obviously, we can go anywhere throughout the course of the game, but that's the vibe that I'm getting. It's what it kind of feels like it's uh, setting up. I mean, I, I'm assuming the house will be, like, the final area. Like, you got to see it a little bit at the start, and then 
now you when you're powered up at the end, you get to climb the stairs and see what's in the attic or something, and that'll be like the final area. That's my guess. Maybe, uh, and you know what? It is establishing a pretty good mystery because right? at the beginning, Olimar is just like, why are the Pikmin running off? Like, why are they being weird? Do they have some kind of like relationship with this place? Or yeah. like, is there something here? Like what? what is driving that kind of mystery? Is there anything or is that just kind of a cute thing where, oh, because Pikmin are cute and they like to bounce on pillows. <laughs> right. I don't really know, but they really, they kind of hammered it home how weird it was. Olimar was weirded out by it. And that's interesting. Yeah. And I mean, bouncing off the idea of, uh, of variety, like I'm, I'm sure some of the other locations will have all the variety you could ever ask for with, with different places and different like environments, but the caves. Uh, caves. Talk as, about caves. As as a big Pikmin 2 enjoyer, I I yeah. got excited immediately at the prospect of caves. Uh, I love them in 2, and it looks like the variety is ramping up dramatically with these caves. It, like, in 2, they always seem like randomly generated dungeons that sometimes have a theme. Here, it's like they look meticulously handcrafted with different gadgets and stuff. A lot of the things we saw in like Pikmin 3's challenge mode and, and stuff and, the, and that the game's DLC. Uh, and to see that as part of the main game, it seems super exciting. So I feel like every single cave is going to give the variety that you would want while getting the cool nature-y stuff. Like the idea of like, almost like Hyrule Castle in Tears of the Kingdom, Breath of the Wild. Like having the house constantly looming around you sounds like a super cool idea while yes. you still get the variety with the caves. Like, it seems like a perfect... And granted, this is me now just fantasizing based off of nothing. Um, but that's my hope. That's my hope. Yeah, I, I think uh, one of the caves... Yeah, I, I, the most interesting one, obviously, is the one with the uh, conveyor belts and you're switching between uh, Poochie and Olimar, <laughs> whatever their names are, and yep. hitting the buttons and, uh, yeah, changing the directions. Like, yeah, it's, it's a lot more puzzly. It's a lot more meticulously crafted. I love how that... Air so... So as far, like mechanically, that's really interesting. That's not just like a randomly generated thing. Um, but then the area, if you like look out in the distance, you're basically in a shed. There's yep. like chains hanging down and like pipes or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's kind of a fun idea is that a lot of these caves might be exploring kind of elements kind of surrounding a house or maybe underneath a house. Yep. And, uh, and that's another thing that kind of just feels like it's supporting the idea that it's really just like this, this one house. That's so cool. I can't wait to boundary break it. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait till you do too. And uh, and I I am kind of like I really like the idea of these meticulously crafted caves, but at the same time I I like I kind of want both because Pikmin two it had so many caves and they were like kind of like halfway randomly generated, and I like that element where sometimes they weren't that well designed. It was really just a bunch of stuff with a bunch of enemies to fight. And I like that too, because that makes replayability so good. Sure. So I would be fine if it was like every other cave was like kind of crafted or had like kind of a puzzle element or, or a kind of a unique uh, mechanic. But I'd be fine if there were a bunch that were just kind of like, oh, here's a bunch of, a bunch of bad guys. Go just eat them, just take them, like fight them. I just like the concept of caves because it adds so much extra content to a Pikmin game. Yeah, it's like it three does. was like, so like three was an evolution of one because no caves, and now four is like an evolution of two because caves. Exactly. Yeah, just the the extra content it provides, and apparently like time does pass uh, some like a lot slower. Like one sixth. It still basically of the speed. stops because you still don't have the clock. I think all that's gonna do is that if you spend a long time, you get back to the surface, it'll just be the end of the day. Like I don't think you're gonna run out of day. No, I went cave. I went into a cave when like the countdown was close to popping up and it didn't end. You know. Yeah, I think that's a happy medium. You you still are spending days going into a cave. It's just not like time is frozen and you can spend a limited time there. You do a cave, you're still going to use up your day. And I think that's completely fair because then you still get to explore the cave at your own pace. I think it's perfect. I think it's the absolute best way they could have possibly done it. And plus, the day timer doesn't really seem to matter. Uh, there's no time limit. I don't, it doesn't, there doesn't seem to be any element that is like, you're going to be running out of time soon, like one in three head. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it matters when it comes to needing to do night traversal, which is not in the demo, so not much to bounce off of there, but yeah, yeah so th wonder, there's nothing to worry about with that. And I wonder if that's only going to be a choice now. Like, I thought that, you know, based off of the trailers, I thought that it was going to be that you would just go straight into night if you missed the deadline, basically. But now, playing the demo, I'm starting to think, like, you have to go for that, you know, excursion, basically. 
Yeah, I assumed it would be like it's it, well, especially with the most recent uh, trailer where they well, not the oh, I didn't watch the most recent overview trailer, but the one in the direct. Um, just when they were like, oh, and there's like these glowy things, and you got to get them. That kind of made it seem more like a mode. So at that point, I pretty much assumed that like, yeah, it's gonna be like a thing. It's gonna be its own thing. You know, you're still probably gonna have these like isolated day things. Did either of you ever? Because they're like, you have to get back before dark. Whereas, like, usually it's just you have to have your Pikmin with you. Did either of you let the timer run out when you were not at your base? I did no. not. I'm sure it's the same as usual, but I did not confirm. Uh, yeah, I just let the timer run out, and it was the same as past games. Okay, just the way they word it is, like, you gotta get back. It's like, well, you don't have to get back, right? Right. Right. <laughs> right. So they, they show you the I, radius that where all the Pikmin are. Like, they're, actually, that's another thing that I loved was that it was a little bit unclear about where the limits were for your base or that you could even have Pikmin be safe when they're at your base. I think maybe there's like a little blip about it in past games, but uh, I, it took me a long time to realize, oh, I can just leave po uh, Pikmin like at the base and they'll be okay. Mm -hmm. In this one, they show you the radius in which like- I think like, three yeah. did that too. I can't remember if it was three or deluxe, but th that one definitely had the, the radius as well. I think it was well. deluxe, yeah. So do we have any other just, uh, I don't know, any, any just like, specifics just fun little features oh no first obviously quality of okay life. yeah i was ready My to i was I, I couldn't believe we went 40 minutes and i've been i've been waiting to just go off on the quality of life stuff and go for it it's more than dude, we could even list here dude i couldn't i was so worried about the behind the back stuff and also not having a weir remote or built-in gyro like i was i was like I was, some, oh, yeah. I, I was like something's gonna go wrong like there's gonna be so many mistakes but oh my god the amount of time they clearly spent on making sure this game worked to its best abilities and there are just so many things like i don't know how everyone else feels about this but if an item requires 10 pikmin and you're just throwing pikmin at it there'll be a small pause uh after you throw your 10th pikmin so you don't accidentally just throw more than you need to oh. and then you can throw more if you want uh if 15 pikmin are carrying back a 10 Pikmin item, you can do a short whistle and five Pikmin will come back and the <laughs> remaining 10 will go. Um, I saw a video where there's like a, a bag that you push down to make a ramp uh, and some Pikmin were getting kind of stuck in the corner, but if you whistle them, they're actually smart and they'll find the path to come up to you instead of just running into the wall constantly. I, I love that. Uh, dude, there are... So many quality of life things that blew my mind um, that they made sure would just it would just work. That's that it's it would, basically it would just it's, work. it's it's going along with the whole um, the whole streamlining thing and the lock on feature. They're basically like, okay, that thing where you play Pikmin and you get kind of stressed out because there's always Pikmin that just get left behind. Yeah. They get stuck on stuff. They're trying to reduce that to zero. Like, oh, that dude. just, like, God, it basically I, doesn't happen anymore. Dude, another thing, when it, when it, like, if, if you break down a wall and it drops, like, sparklium or whatever the material was, they will automatically start bringing it back to, to your base. Um, you don't gotta tell them to. If Pikmin are just left stranded, you don't have to whistle them. You can just walk up next to them and they'll come towards you. You don't have to whistle yeah, them just anymore. Get, like, so, close enough. And that's speaking great. of sparklium, you know how, like... Three introduced the idea of there being a pile of stuff, and the yes. Pikmin will go back and forth to the pile. Have you noticed how in this one, just the right number of Pikmin will bring them back? If you only if you do less Pikmin than the things in the pile, they will keep going back and forth, but they will always stay at the base if yes. there are no more left in the pile. So you yes. don't have to go back to the pile. Even that, like that was a great little new feature in three that felt like so convenient, and yet now, like even that has been streamlined. No one gets left behind. So, you don't have to worry about like, oh no, I left all those Pikmin there. It's so good. Oh yeah. my God, it's so good. Yep. That's so insightful for me because um, I hadn't noticed those things, and those are all all awesome th additions that I didn't even think about. For me, like I, I, I got hung up on a couple of things that were a little weird. One was uh, if you throw two Pikmin at a candy bud, only one brings it back. So that's like one thing, and I'm pretty sure yeah, because because every 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 item it seems like they strategically want to make sure you get the minimum as opposed to spending excess. Uh, right, Pikmin. So yeah, like, if you want to put extra on it, you kind of have to like take that time to do extra. Which, you know, like you, you throw the exact number of Pikmin, and then like from there, you kind of stop and like, okay, yeah. now I want to put extra on it so it'll go a little bit faster. So for me, that that kind of stinks a little bit because okay, but, well, because you want to be able to just throw the two Pikmin and move on, walk, and you know you don't want to stay with the candy bud and wait for it to drop. 
so that you can have two Pikmin. Because that ends up wasting time instead of saving time. But It does um, remove a little bit of choice. And there, and there have been a couple times when, because of the lock-on and the whole thing where it only lets you throw the exact right number of Pikmin, there will be like a pile of something. And I'm trying to throw all over, but it like kind of keeps like, nope, nope, now lock onto that one. So there have been just a couple instances where I'm like, okay, this is a little bit... It would be nice to be able to just free throw and they just kind of go like in the old games. Mm -hmm, so sure. it's it's definitely like, you know, they're, they're working it out, but I think it's probably more convenient than not, you know, like it introduces yeah, more based off what you guys said, awkwardness. Sure. I yeah. mean, the, the, the other part uh, is when it comes to caves and stuff, when you walk into a cave, it says, which Pikmin would you like to bring? Oh my gosh, uh, that's like when almost you leave, When convenient. you leave a cave, it's like, okay, now what Pikmin do you want now? Uh, as opposed to just needing to run back to your base, you act, like you go to the cave, you see what type of Pikmin it wants, you go back to your thing to, you know, to get the pick and like streamlines that, uh, and that's great. Um, I guess, I guess another really thing to mention is it's not so much a downside, but it's different. You can only have three Pikmin type out at once. You can't have more than three out at wow. one, and more than three types at once. Yes, and um, like at the beginning, the onions, you can't even have a hundred Pikmin on the and field. Then yeah. that, I don't, yeah. I don't love that upgrade, change. Though. That's one thing that I, I really, it's like, okay, we're regressing, you know, it's like... It's interesting. Yeah, it's I mean, like... It's interesting, it is. It's sort of like, I don't, I don't like that with game sequels, when where they throw in speed bumps or roadblocks that weren't there in past games just to kind of, you know, create a challenge that wasn't there before. Like, I always think, like, Think out, think about what was the restrictions of the past game, and then work off of that. Not like regress. You know, the idea of having to go from 30 Pikmin to 100 over time. I don't love it. I mean, I can work with it, but it's it. You know, I never thought, oh, I have too many Pikmin, I'm gonna get them all, you know, killed, or anything like that. So I don't even see it as like a safeguard for newer players or anything. It's just one. Yeah, of those I'm kind of. I I kind of feel like. I can definitely see both sides, and I think I'm I'm more on the positive side of it. Uh, one, just because it's kind of different, you know, like just it's it's good to have changes and stuff. Um, it also it provide you know it does provide that kind of like sense of progression, which which is a little bit artificial. It is kind of take it away just so you can like earn it back, and I am kind of a sucker for that. But I can definitely see that it's not always the right choice. It's not always like super intuitive. Um, but I think the main reason that I'm for it is um, it's kind of, I like it because in the original games, like when you know the game really well, you know, you're like, okay, I start the game. I build up a hundred red Pikmin in five minutes. <laughs> and now I can just take on anything, whatever, whatever boss, I just rush him. Or like, oh, there's like a big, you know, a big boss near the water. Oh, it's a, okay, hundred blues, just go blah, just like destroy it. This kind of like, it's lowering your power level a little bit in a way that makes it harder to just kind of dominate the game, uh, which is good in one way, but then it's bad in another because, you know, for replayability, you sometimes th that's what's fun about the old games is you can just kind of like find a way to completely destroy them. Um, so I, again, I can kind of go both ways, but I can see the value in limiting the player. So they're not as powerful as they are ever gonna be after minutes, you know, after a single in-game day, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. I also wonder if now that I know that there's only allowed to be three different types of Pikmin on the field at a, any given time, I wonder if that's gonna be an upgrade as well. I don't know, my guess, if I had to guess, was that it's gonna come down to the individual area Maybe, I guess maybe not because in the first area there's a lot of water and stuff, and you do get blues. Do to be fair, this is also something I just read online, and I, I personally have I didn't play the demo to completion, so I have not had more than three Pikmin types. It's what I read, right, so I'm true. basing off of what what I read. Yeah, I was gonna say, did you, you get, get the blue can Pikmin? You get blue says? Pikmin in the demo? Granted, okay, this, yeah, I, this, could, this could also be just completely <laughs> fake BS that I just got fooled on Twitter because I didn't want to play more of the demo because I wanted to save it for the launch. But that's what I read, and I just. I'm working off that. Gotcha. No, I'm it seems, sure it seems right. like it would be something. Because then you have, probably... you're going to have what? You're going to have eight different Pikmin types now? Nine. Well, yeah, but you can't use wow. the ghost ones during the, the oh, day. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, uh, it is a lot. So I, I have to imagine. Yeah, anyone who played the demo and actually got the blues, they already probably see if there's like a little thing where you like choose what you have or whatever. But uh, no, it, it is interesting. And I, I think it's. It makes sense, yeah, because there just are so many different Pikmin types. You have to limit it somehow, um, and that could play into the strategy, you know, in the same way that you, 
you know, you, you choose what Pikmin you want to have in your party at any given time. Okay, well, they've reduced it a little bit more. Maybe you have to be even more strategic about it, and I'm sure the the game is going to be designed around that limitation. So it's another thing I have to experience kind of a lot before I can make a judgment call on, you know? I think part mm -hmm. of me likes to, like, when it comes to Pikmin games, replayability is important. Uh, so the idea of... I'm going to try to do this first playthrough, getting as many Pikmin as I can, but on future playthroughs, I'll maybe try to do a low Pikmin run. I'm sure some people, like a Zelda 3 Heart run, some people maybe try to do a 30 Pikmin run. Uh, I think that adds a little bit of complexity to it, but it, it you know, it depends on how annoying it could be to get the, what do they call, Flarlix? To... Yeah, it could be like a no Flarlick run. No, a no Flarlick run. Uh, maybe you can have more than 100, finally. Uh, maybe that's like a big thing. You could finally go past that. So. It'd be cool. I don't think so. I don't think they ever will. Too much processing power. It's fair. fair. Um, yeah, that is true. And like having those limitations, you know, you could even set up little challenges for yourself. It could it could be like a thing like, oh, have you played, you know, this level with only reds, yellows and blues or, mm -hmm. or something, you know, like only using these three Pikmin types. It uh, There's some potential there, you know. Uh, so now. So, yeah. So now we've talked about caves. We've talked about a lot of different stuff. Now let's do just little little details, little specifics, little just individual things or enemies or mechanics or something that anyone wants to talk about. You got anything, Ant? Uh, I mean, it, it'll be interesting uh, with what she says in, in the group here. I think the game looks gorgeous. Um, <laughs> I think, I mean, listen, I'm, I respect opinions. I, I think the game looks gorgeous. I think it's one of the best looking games I've seen like on the Switch. Um, yeah, definitely. I think just the amount of detail, I think pulling the camera back gets you to see more intimate details of the environment. Like when you go, you see under the the, the, the bench and, and stuff like that, I, I you know, getting really up close with the enemies. Uh, I really like that stuff. It doesn't seem like there's a camera mode like there was in 3, so this is like our next best thing. Um, Which is surprising. I know, because I love that a lot. Uh, but it's interesting, because like 3 also looked really good. Uh, and it was just interesting, and I... I you know, I'm not putting you on the spot because I wanted you to get grilled, uh, she says. But it's interesting because I know you don't share that same uh, viewpoint. Yeah. You don't like how it looks? Um, you know, I appreciate that you... Not to put you on the spot. I'm just game. genuinely... I just... <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm, again. Boom. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Well, you know, it, it, it. this is a game made for the Switch, right? And so mm -hmm. many games that get made for the Switch end up having a lot of default features that just don't look great like level of detail popping in and out um bloom the bloom effect and uh, just just things like that i when i look at pikmin 3 it's more i don't know how to describe it i'll just say that everyone's entitled to their opinion if you think that this looks <laughs> better than three awesome the small detail that i love is the the uh title screen music i think it's like oh my gosh chills so catchy yeah. Oh, it's so good. No, I really, I almost cried. Like, when I was playing the demo. And just, because especially, like, it's just been so long. It's been 10 years. And just the, oh, the little piano. Oh, it's good. Yeah. It's so good. I don't know if you guys have ever played Fallout 4, but it gives me, like, Fallout 4 vibes with how they kind of messed with the theme and made it just, like, simple. Yet, like, just gives you a good feeling. No, nah, I didn't play 4. I played 3. Oh. oh, okay. Yeah, well, they they basically reduce it to a piano melody and... It just kind of, it sets the tone in such a, a nice way. And I'll just say that for Pikmin 4 as well. It's just, it's such a, like a, ooh, yeah, okay. There's like a calmness, yet almost like a mystique. Yes, like the the very low, like rumbly notes, kind of underneath the melody. It, yeah, it kind of, I mean, it's basically exactly the tone that we have been shown through all the story and stuff. Yeah, it's like, it's kind of fun. It's a little bit spunky, but it's also kind of serene and beautiful. And then, yeah, that, that mystique underneath, ooh. Oh, it's good. Oh, I got yeah. the goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, I didn't really dig the... I don't remember the name of the first area, but I don't think the first area really had, like, a... I couldn't tell you if it had music. It was very, very subdued. Uh, the house? The, or, like, the area area? The first, yeah, the first full area. Like, normally, you know every what? You picking level right. has, like, has, like, a pretty memorable tune that gives off a certain vibe, but I couldn't tell you anything about the music from that that location that you get to explore. There's a lot I of cool musical either. tropes, because, yeah, title screen's good. Uh, they they maintain the jingles of like going into the cave and stuff from two, and that's really cool. But I couldn't tell you anything about the track for that first level. You're right. I I can't remember it at all. It does seem very minimal, and uh, I hope that that's not the case for the whole game. Because yeah, the the music from 
one and two is so incredibly good. One in particular had like very present, very strong music. And uh, three was also really good, but it was a little bit more mellow, a little more background. Mm -hmm. um, I really would like some strong tunes in this one. Cause yeah, Pikmin music is so incredibly good. Mm -hmm. Super unique. And I love how much the musical themes change, how drastically from game to game. Uh, which, I mean, like, the overall feels of every game have been completely different. Like, completely different from one to two to three, and now to four. So, like, it makes sense that they're kind of evolving the music in that way. Yeah, just don't devolve it. Don't have it be, like, not enough music. Sure. That would not be fun. Uh, any other, uh, just small detail. I'll, I'll share one. All of the upgrading, I think, is really, really, really cool. And I think it's clever. Because one, it appeals to people like me who love just artificial progression, collect the thing to upgrade the thing. I just love it. I'm a sucker for it. It's totally dumb, but I love it. Um, but like more importantly, though, I feel like it was introduced as a way to kind of like ease the player into learn because it's there's so much to learn. And yet Nintendo does not like to overwhelm the player. And that's why they have a tendency to over tutorialize everything. And so it's nice that they're like, OK, well, like, let's wrap some of these just things, these concepts, these mechanics into items that you end up buying. And I think that's really clever. It's a really clever way to kind of slowly introduce them. Isn't like the the old Pikmin 1 styled uh, force all the Pikmin into a direction? That's an item now. Uh, I have heard that. Spoilers. Oh, sorry. I that, sorry, yes. this is a spoiler. Uh, I imagine like the, the uh, man, the names escape me. The pluck a phone, whatever it is, when you whistle and you can pull Pikmin out. I imagine that'll be an item. Maybe I don't know. See, that's what's so funny is like I don't know what is possibly going to return from two because two also has a lot of amazing things. So I don't really know. Every time I think they're surely not gonna like I keep I have this idea of two as the game that Nintendo wants to leave behind because it was the weird one and they tend to kind of like bury those ones. So. Every time there's a new thing, it has so much DNA from 2. I need to get over that idea. Yeah. Because there's so much from 2. So, yeah, I don't know. Like, are they going to bring back all of the items? Is that something we can expect? Or, like, just some of them? I don't know. Yeah. yeah a lot it, of questions. I'm very excited. It's, so it's kind of cool. Like, like, 3 and 4 now have sort of had this idea that it, it kind of introduce like it, try, it tries to entice new players by nintendo -fying it but then as you play the game further and further it starts to trickle in the weirdness of pikmin 2 you know th there's like the last boss of pikmin 2 kind of gave me similar vibes for the last boss of pikmin 3 and there's things in the story now that has already been introduced in the demo like i said earlier in the discussion that just kind of gives me good old school pikmin vibes so it's it's fun it's fun to see that these developers are not like outright abandoning the uh identity of the of the past games to just sort of appeal to a mainstream audience mm -hmm. it does seem more like they're trying to kind of seem inviting and then allow the players to kind of get invested the same way we have when we played those original games. Yeah, it, it, it is good because like, and especially if they are like kind of retconning the story, they could have retconned anything, but like this this game is like one, two, and three. Like everything from those games is carrying over. All of the ideas and they, it really does feel like they are trying to make it like the best possible Pikmin experience. They're not leaving any idea, because it's, you know, it's very frustrating, especially with Nintendo, if you get a sequel and it's just like, yeah, but these whole elements that you really loved about those previous ones, let's just not. Like, you know, let's just, eh, forget about it. Right. <laughs> so it, it feels really good that it, it feels like the people making this are genuinely like, no, this is a Pikmin game. We are looking at every Pikmin thing possible and kind of putting together, it's like a greatest hits, you know, it's got a lot of new stuff, but then it's also a greatest hits of Pikmin goodness. Yeah, I could see that. And then it has a, a good measure of its own identity too, its own things. Like, again, the Captains was a, a really, it's a very huge departure for, for the series to have this many non-playable characters interacting, ability to talk to, three kind yeah. of, kind of dipped our toe in that idea but it was still somewhat isolating when you only have three characters now it's like a community is building as you're going through the game and i'm glad that they if they went that direction they're really trying to to prove that there's a purpose for that and i'm seeing it and it's cool and it does separate it from one two and three i like it yeah absolutely
Well, I think we have uh, pretty much everything covered. I think uh, I think it Pikmin 4 looks pretty great. I don't know. I'm pretty I'm pretty excited about it. There are a lot of elements that could go one way or the other. It just it comes down to the design. It comes down to like sitting there and playing it before we know for sure. But I feel like it is very promising, and I'm very I'm excited, excited. to see the potential of Dandori battle. Uh, oh my gosh! Yes, because oh, like I so loved fun. I loved Bingo battle. I liked the battle mode in Pikmin 2. Uh, it's interesting that they're incorporating the battle mode into the main campaign now. That's what and I like about it. Because, like, I like, challenge mode, I, I never, I mean, I, I did the challenge mode a fair amount in 3, um, but overall, if it's just, like, chasing a high score, I'm not super into it. But, like, yeah, incorporating it into the story, and you get actual rewards in the story, and there's, like, plot elements, yeah. I am all about it. Because, yeah, yeah the, the Dandori battle, the two that I played in the demo are so super fun. Yeah, I, I, th I think the only fears I have are the game maybe being too easy in general, because the opening's pretty easy. Yeah, that's uh, my number one potential kind of fear. And then way too much dialogue. I imagine once you get going, it, it stops, it slows down dramatically. Uh, Probably, yeah. When you get to the next area, I'm hoping it kind of just lets you... It really doesn't want you to discover or do anything on your own. It wants to <laughs> it wants to yeah. tell you what's coming and what you're going to do about it. You are part of happens. this rescue corps but it, but it, by every sense of the word. You are part of a crew and they will be talking to you the entire time. Yeah. I yeah. I, I have the expectation going into this that it's going to be a more wordy Pikmin game. That's like again community focused it seems like and that the story is going to be more involved. So like, uh, what they've shown so far as a appetizer has me fully interested in the full course meal. Like, let's see where this story goes. And if they really want to, you know, stop me every two seconds to, to do this story, that's the expectation I have going into this. And if it doesn't, you know, hey, we all benefit as old school Pikmin fans where that wasn't the case. But mm -hmm. for me, I'm just, I'm ready. I, I got the buckle shackled for an idea of a narrative driven Pikmin game. And I'm just hoping that like the, the the whole tutorial aspect of all the heavy dialogue is sort of washed out after the demo. Yeah, yeah, at least to a degree. And and that's the thing is, even if it does end up being like very dialogue heavy, well like, okay, it can be a little annoying, but at the same time, wow, a Pikmin game with a story. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It's just cool. We have not have it had a heavy story, you know, three, yeah, three was definitely closer, but it was still just kind of like, we got to find this thing. Oh no, we got separated. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit more in depth than there's more more players in this game. I want to cool. I want to save Olimar and finally get a cutscene with his wife. I'm tired oh, yeah. of wife it just kids. being that image. Yeah, that image from the the dial like the the calls you get at the end of the day. I want to see I want to see this entire family, you know, in Reunited. motion. Is great. I want to see Louis's, you know, annoying the mom. Muppets. Yeah. Oh. Or yeah, no, his annoying mom. There was always it's nagging him. And yeah, I just want to see all of it. This is this is the chance to really. I want to see her make him eat bugs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> well, thank you guys for joining me again. This has been a whole lot of fun. Remind everyone where we can find you and all that stuff. She says. All right. Well, Google or YouTube. Just type in Boundary Break. I'll be the first thing to pop up. If you want an episode to watch, think of one of your favorite games, type in your game title, show title, you'll have a good time. He, yeah, he, whatever it is, he, especially if you you know play Nintendo, he probably did it. Ant, what about you? Yeah, YouTube and uh, Twitter for the time being. Uh, AntDude92, yeah. you can find me over there making dumb posts on Twitter, making f videos on video games on YouTube. I've done Pikmin in the past. I'm a, I'm a Hey Pikmin enjoyer, so if you want to find a fellow Hey Pikmin enjoyer, one of the one of the ten people out there, I'm one of them. I uh, did a video on that. Uh, yeah, that's that. Yeah, and this was this was kind of it was sort of like a little ArloCast reunion, and I'm sure yeah. lots of the comments are going to be asking about ArloCast. I answer this question a lot. I I want to bring it back. I just don't want to bring it back until I can do it kind of consistently. So I like it. I want to do more. I'm just at a place right now where I got a lot of other stuff going on, like streaming. That's true. Reminder, I'm streaming. Ooh. You guys streaming at all recently? No, but I've been watching some of yours and they're fantastic. So if oh, anyone you. hasn't seen Arlo streams, make sure you do. It's a good time. Thank you. Please do. Please do. Make sure you do. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. I'll see you later. People watching this, see you later. Pikmin 4, it's coming out soon. Makes it sound like a sponsored thing. Just like yeah. you, you can get Pikmin 4 on uh, July 21st. Not sponsored. Bye. Bye. <laughs> see ya.